Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is XP. captions on this video were provided by Liara, nothing for this video was provided by Pixel Riffs, because he has escaped not just the confinements of the voiceover basement, but seemingly the continent of Europe. According to his Twitter, he's having a vacation, and good for him, that does however leave me alone on the recap duty. And I'm just lucky Mambo Jumbo only announced his comeback to the server and hasn't already started uploading. I'm not sure I can bear the full brunt of a Mambo Jumbo video at this time. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. And look, if you wanna be a joke in the comments, you can just mute me and enable the subtitles, okay? We'll start with Kafan 135 because he comes with some good feels. The Hermitcraft charity push from a while ago that crushed Tiltify service twice over has brought its fruits. Gamers Outreach, who Hermits partnered with, has now sent out the gamer cards bought with the donation money. So to everyone who participated and helped, great props, you made lives better and richer. A huge personal thank you to each and every one of you out there. I will continue to follow through, letting you guys know where and when these carts are delivered to uh, hospitals throughout the country. Some more good news from Cub is that it is now the year 2023. Not all good news are created equal. To celebrate the new year, Cubfan had a massive festival stick assembled in the Hermitland shopping district and rigged to shoot out fireworks. A 15 minute firework show with a great multi color blowout at the end has crowned the new year. And only then did Cub realize that there's still a secret Santa gift waiting for him since Christmas. And I think our actual secret Santa is out somewhere near Total Chaos, and I was just dense when someone sent me a message about it, uh, saying that they didn't know what it was. They actually 100% knew what it was. Uh, I was just uh, not picking up a hint. Joe Hills has left him a few shulkers of goodies, one full of player heads including the unique Empires ones. He also signed his secret Santa present, so I guess this is a normal Santa present now. Ren the King's head? That's a rare one. Very good. Pixel Rift's heads? Ooh, that's a rare one. That's a rare one. A generous soul himself, Cub actually prepares a treat for Zedaf, whose pile of unique blocks just happens to still lack the Deep Slate Emerald. Cub then stashes the war away in a custom-made puzzle adventure he built just for Zed. And I just laugh because one of the puzzles is throwing a birthday party for an alley, and it's funny because I absolutely expect Zedaf to solve that without even trying. I also expect him to forget to bring a Silk Touch pick to the event. This block here will actually be the Deep Slate Emerald Lore that ZF seeks, so he's gonna be able to mine that in this room. The entire room is going to flood. We're also going to have scuba diving pillagers. While we're talking about custom adventures, it would be a shame not to bring up XB Crafted's latest outing. With Keralis and Vintage Beef, the three of them tackle Zombie Cleo's latest escape room minigame. The plot here is that XB, Keralis and Beef walk into a lab and everyone is dead. Oh, there's a cheat book here. It says for each hint, add one minute to your time. I'm not going to flip any pages yet. <laughs> Don't like it. Sounds if like we, we give it up to, already. <laughs> if we need to. <laughs> Before they can escape, the adventurers need to figure out the disease that did everyone in, disable the lockdown and concoct a solution to kill the virus. Their crack team then proceeds to ignore one of the hint corpses for 20 minutes of their time, making me think that that guy may have actually been not dead when they first arrived. Uh, collect minutes. neutralizer before collect proceeding. Before proceeding. Okay. Oh, there. Remove neutralizer before continuing. Door will lock if override is in effect. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, did we just make a boo, boo But finally, in Under the Part Time, they figure out the solution, which, spoiler alert, turns out to be sodium hydroxide. That sounds familiar. Wait, isn't that just soap? I guess to shake Leo, soap does kill viruses. And I would know. I ate a whole bar today, and I never felt healthier. Vintage Beef goes on to prepare his own adventure for the rest of the server, though he first gives I Jevin something to do, since Beef lost his entire inventory solar. Jevin comes through and brings him a full set of quality gear, for whatever Boy Scout badge that's worth. Do maybe Beef does owe him a badge now, since he's clearly walking on a Pokemon gym for the Hermitcraft card game. There's the yellow side of it, I call it the lemon side, and then here's, here's the lime side. Did I do these guys here already? I've got to also add all the uh, the things underneath 
that will require this game to run smoothly. Beef installs a cut game battle arena in the shopping district, where the players will be able to try out their fresh decks. Which is one heck of a marketing scheme, because it's very much just next door to the now stocked up cut store full of vending machines. Gotta check what the rules say about buying new packs midway through a duel, because this could be really hilarious. While Beef fills the rest of the nerd shop with memorabilia, Exomavoid works on developing his own battle arena on the outskirts of the server. This one is much more technologically intense, with threadstone that governs a lot of the battle. Be it the initial coin toss or shuffling the decks, Exuma has it covered. Yes, the luxury of having copper automatically aged for him really got to the guy. Watch out, he'll be automating the players next. Now I've just got a grind in front of me where I've got to build the rest of it and then playtest this little arena. No, the game still needs someone to actually trigger the events of the battle, but it's nice that so much of the referee work is minimized or else being the gym leader would become a full-time job. Then again, you can do that and remain a streamer, according to the latest Pokemon games. I need to take a break from this episode, I think this episode is done. So yeah, this episode of Vintage Beef has been brought to you by iJevin. But what else did he do? Well, Jevin is out there living his best life on that cliff base of his. For a while now, he's been threatening to build up a mountainside castle. And this week, the first cornerstone of the actual build hits the pavement. Is that what cornerstones do? I don't actually know how buildings are made. iJevin says the word turret like 15 times while describing this build, and I'm yet to see a single gun. So this whole operation has me mighty confused. Turrets and the central turret. There will be other tall builds, but in sheer size of volume, this is probably going to be the biggest. The structure starts with a grand entry hall, about as detailed and fancy as the cathedral Jevin keeps his villagers in. Coincidentally, that will be the function of the building as well. Any spare trader people will find their home in the keep, and their job is running around looking busy. Just so the lord of the castle doesn't get too lonely in his enormous front porch. Man, the acoustics in that thing gotta be epic. Overall, I'm very happy with it. I think I'm... I, I don't know if I like it better than the cathedral or not, because the cathedral's kind of my, my first baby. <laughs> Once you have a second one, you're kind of like, okay, you can eat dirt, it's fine, no big deal. Overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Um, on the flip side, Pearlescent Moon is slowly moving into under the overpass, pretty much. The Impulse's bridge to Hess does not actually lead anywhere, so to fix that, she blasts a hole right through the cliff and settles in the resulting tunnel. Turns out the safest place to stand during an alien invasion is under a door frame, and what is a tunnel if not a very long door? Depends, I have visitors. Looks like they're having a lovely fun time exploring all the my rocks that I have in my base. Yeah, I just leave them to it, they can have a party. Pearl settles into the sidewall and puts in a chest room in there for a good measure. Much good that did, because now the road out of Impulse's base just leads into the spruce forest behind the cliff. But at least it's not a Looney Tunes situation anymore where a highway just hits a wall. These here, these, these, these are good, these are good. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. We, we are gonna chop these down, I can't leave these. <laughs> no floating trees with the cleaning lady, thank you very much. For his part, Impulse's V builds a tunnel leading to his base in the nether, as Geminate watches idly. You wanna build with me? No, I just, I'm... Oh, what are you up to? What? Obviously... Care for me. Oh, okay, I see why now. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> But it's okay because our other neighbor, Pearl, I didn't even say anything to her. I was just like, I'm terraforming. And she was like, I'm in. Wow. So it's all good. Hope I'm not alone in thinking that the pattern and palette here makes it look like a Synthway lo fi screensaver. Because, I mean, look at it. Nowadays, Impulse is able to go lo-fi and hi-fi, thanks to a bubble elevator design that can actually let you pick what floor you're going to. Only the best for the customers at the iBuy Megastore. They can also take the stairs, the elevator only works for one person at a time. You have a giant shop reaching into the sky, you're putting eyes on everything, what's going on? Come on. I need a hug. <laughs> I need somebody to tell me I'm good and awesome. You're good! You're, you're awesome and good. Now, on the topic of tryhards, it shouldn't remain unsaid that even a countrywide internet outage could not stop DocM from uploading a 50 minute episode last minute on Friday. A fact that may or may not have something to do with this video being so late. The world may never know. When finally my internet worked again, get my team wanna play, 
worldwide server outage of Microsoft, can't log on for two hours, like, cool, I'm awake already, what am I gonna do? Finally, uh, Microsoft gets their act together and I get a few hours in. Half of Germany uh, had a uh, internet outage for like five hours. Much of his time is spent still programming the turbo storage system from last week. The one capable of multi-item sorting and doing your dishes. The trick to it, however, is that the machine still takes time to process a lifetime of inventory. And not willing to AFK for it, Doc instead invests into a carved pumpkin-based chunk loader. The passing of an item through the nether portal is meant to keep the area loaded for some extra time. And that's about as far as I can understand this device personally, so just give his video a watch if you want to figure it out. I'm sure his accent explaining it sounds nicer than mine anyway. The time saved on AFK is spent decorating the mossy floor of the room as well as assaulting more of the Hermitcraft members with anvil drops. By now, Dog decided to expand his list of targets from just Etho to the entire nation of Canada. That's why he tracks down and squishes down Gemini Tay as well as Randog, who did in fact spend the holidays with his Canadian relatives. Also, Impulse SV is assigned Canadian, I suppose. In the meantime, Ixuma actually Canadians himself. Ixuma got squashed by anvil? Uh, it was me, I swear. I swear. But uh, now I'm really intrigued what actually happened there. I, I swear, it wasn't me. The others don't believe it, though. With his energy replenished from the homeland tree, or however Canadians operate, Randog returns to the server with big plans for Keralis to execute. First and foremost, Rand believes that the joint Gigalogs corporation is so ahead of the competition that it's simply criminal they don't have a proper headquarters. Keralis agrees, and the two of them decided to face the problem head on. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tidy up, yeah. and we're gonna have a little office over here Office somewhere. here? We can start getting together huh. again and like start getting our business back up and running, right? Love it. Love the idea. Yeah. Doran's own workload is large enough. His Gigacore base had big plans going forward, between a thousand hopper redstone auto sorter for the main storage and a 60 villager powered iron farm needed just to afford the hoppers. And let's not forget about Ren's undying need to decorate and stylize all his contraptions. And the next few weeks in Randog promise to be rather epic. I also think it's about time we start working on a mega base of our own, as I mentioned a bit earlier on. Although at this stage, I have no idea what that might look like. But that's about it for this week's recap. My name is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Once again, thank you guys for making this channel what it is today and supporting the recap week after week. You've made my life better and I hope I can return the favor in some way. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, subscribe so you won't miss future recaps, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Also if any of you see uh, Pixel Riffs in America, uh, please tell him to come home, um, I promise I'll start feeding him.